Good morning. Okay, this is a Monday morning. It's very cold. It's a minus something. I'll check the temperature later and do a screenshot and show you. But I wake up with these ideas. Now, for me, this is a work day, part-time work, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So incentive to get up and go to work is have a picnic in the snow. I went into the garage and I pulled out one drawer from my three drawer unit and discovered the mice were building a nest in there. They pulled out little bits of wood and paper and they'd been through the whole drawer. So I took everything and washed it up. Obviously I need to keep this unit, this three drawer unit inside the Honda. We had pulled it out temporarily to transport items to a recent market, but now it's getting back into order. So I've got my insulated mugs, bowls, utensils, in the other two drawers, I have our cooking camp gear. In the small cooler bag, I have homemade chili, crackers, hot chocolate, items for tea if we want it, and of course, water. And this is what we're looking at, a winter wonderland. I think we might be a little bit crazy. Actually, the word is eccentric. The more eccentric you are, the longer you live. That's what my mom told me. <laughs> and it gives me freedom to just be myself. Not the easiest thing to do, crocheting in the car when it's cold. Well, it's on the move. Meaning my husband is driving. I am not. Actually, this is where fingerless gloves come in handy because you get to uh, do things in the car. Plus it's handy for when you're using your iPhone, turn it on off, selecting things. Good reason for fingerless gloves. at 3 p.m. Well, we won't be here till 3. No, and I guess they don't want to man it or have somebody manning the gate until after 3 o'clock. Pretty bumpy. Do they man the gate or do they just lock them? What's that? Do they man them or just lock them? Yeah. Do you do it, just lock them? Our pick of spots. <laughs> I will have a pick of any. Well, this is winter, and this is what we have snow everywhere, and ice beginning to form. But we don't care, it's what we have. We're working with what we have. And that's why we're there. This one? It does, depends on how much you put in. One container chili. There's a screw. I don't know where that's from. Let's just keep it in case we ever need it. Sure, it's clean. Push this down, clicker, look at that, on, right off, on, right off, on, right away. Water, water. Ah, you know it's nice? Warm. Keeps you nice and warm here. All right, all the uh, hey, truck are in. I need something to put it in. Look at that busy. Yeah. At least I thought I did. Woo. Hot, hot, really hot. 
Probably a good idea to turn it down a little bit. Right. Wow, it smells great. Okay, let's see if we can get this in here. Wow. Here it is. Let go, please. Thank you. And there's our pot. So I'm going to turn it down. It's still going? Yeah. And put the lid on it for a few minutes. Oh, that's where the screw is. The, uh, the, the little thing for the lid is missing, but that's fine. So Stanley, so we're going to have chili for lunch. Now tell me how you made your chili. Well, I made the chili yesterday with um, basically stuff I could find around the place in the fridge and the cupboards. And then I went out to the store and got my stuff that I didn't have. So the chili was made up of um, onion. Talk up a wee bit. Onion. Onion and diced tomatoes and one whole sweet uh, red pepper. Yeah, diced tomatoes that was in the can? A yeah, can but of I, had to, I had to dice them. I thought they were gonna be diced, but it doesn't matter. Oh, okay, yeah. But canned tomatoes, okay. Yeah, and I put a, a pinch of uh, pepper. What kind of pepper was that I showed you? Green pepper. No, no, a pinch of yellow. pepper. Oh, pepper. Yeah, chili pepper. <laughs> Oh, chili pepper, yeah. Put a pinch of that in it and uh, ground beef. I browned up beforehand and added to the mixture. Uh, can of beans. Two cans of two cans of baked beans. One was a British style, and a can of kidney beans. Put it in the slow cooker and simmer. Let it simmer for about four to five hours. And it was delicioso. <laughs> so good. And we brought some today. Yeah. And we're sitting out here, the two mad people. The two, so, two, two mad, mad, mad people oh. sitting out in mud <laughs> and snow <laughs> just to get a look at the... <laughs> get a look at the lake there. Yeah, not... eventually there will be ice huts on there and ice fishing. Yeah. It'll get a couple of feet of ice. Cars and huts will go out. Not sure about the cars, depends how thick the ice is, but it's a bit of a fun place. And then 15th of March, you got to take your hut off the ice because otherwise your hut will go for a swim. <laughs> Uninvited. It looks nice, eh? Anyway, this is Susie's idea. I'm frozen like a stick. <laughs> Even though you've got a cover and you've got a cover underneath you on the chair and... I've got about 10 layers of clothes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm waiting for this uh, chili. Now I'm going to check the chili I'm now. I'm probably going to have it for supper again tonight. With, with, <laughs> I don't know. Which we large, don't mind that. So. Which large slabs of bread. Okay, got to go. Ugh, got the camera turned the wrong way. Nice. Yeah. Now, our holes are in here. If you don't, something's not in the right place, just throw it out there. I actually have a nice scoop for this. This nice scoop. Look at that. Huh? One for you. One for me. If the conservation people stop and ask us what we're doing, we'll just say we're homeless. <laughs> Maybe they'll leave us. All right. Okay. That goes over here. Now, I just have to get the water on for the uh, hot chocolate. Put 
quick, quick. Don't you think the food tastes better when you're sitting outdoors? I'll tell you in a minute. But you've done it, right? Um, when you were working in the bush years ago? When oh, your yeah. First, All kinds of times. Your first wife left. We, we've, <laughs> we've warmed up uh, roast beef in the ashes of the fire. Uh, roast beef wrapped in foil. Ah, that's and wonderful. It goes into the ashes of the fire and at lunch, have you? Drawer. Where I'm getting stuff. Oh, here's the drawer. You want a big spoon, small spoon? What kind of spoon you want? This one or this one? Yeah, that one. This one? Yeah. Okay. I'll take the small. Alright, we're good. Your turn. Take your bowl. Get yourself situated. That's my three drawers inside my unit. Time to eat. Do you want crackers? There we are. We're almost both in the kitchen. Can warm your hands up on the bowl. Nice. What would you like here? Carnation, uh, what's it called? Rich and chocolate or whatever. A arrow s'mores or an after eight chocolate mix or turtles. You got all that stuff there. I have it all here. What do you want? Uh, I don't know. Let me see again. Let me see. Turtles after eight regular chocolate but it says creamy and arrow s'mores hot chocolate. I was supposed hot chocolate. Oh. Your s'mores has some marshmallows in it. Did the water heat up? I don't know. I hope so. I'm just mixing the chocolate with a bit of milk first. I feel like there's snow flying on me. Well, there's steam flying off of it. That's a good sign. I have to warm my hand up on the kettle. <laughs> Frozen hands. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, this kettle is probably the warmest thing around here. Well, now that we have the car on, we get the seat heaters oh, yeah. going. The seats are yeah. heating up. Oh, that's great. Well, this is what we get to see. And we're having our hot chocolate in our insulated mugs. <laughs> we need some insulation. Yes, we do. I need some. I need to pack it in. <laughs> I need to pack in the stuff to give me insulation. Uh, I insulate you every night. Do you? Yeah, especially with menopause heat ups. You don't come that close though. <laughs> Sometimes. 
You're usually asleep, you don't know it. I'm still gonna warm up with the kettle. <clears throat> well, this is our first uh, winter pic picnic. <laughs> It's uh, early December, yeah, and we're sitting looking out over Island Lake, which is a recreation place in summertime, and uh, fishing, ice fishing in the wintertime. Some guys enjoy it. I've never been a big fan of fish hunts, and well, if, you, if you're well equipped, it's okay. You have a stove inside and it gets windy and cool. You go inside and close the door. Or and some guys of course they put the hut right over the hole. And then you can always fish and be out of the weather. And then if it gets really nice, some of them will, will uh, use their auger and drill holes where you can sit outside and fish. I've seen them do that. So don't they put a hut up first and then they drill a hole? Well, the, yes, they, that's likely they do. Um, it makes sense not to have the hole <laughs> you're putting the, the hut up. You might disappear down the hole, although they're not that big. Imagine if you start putting a hole in and then a crack develops. Well, that's why <laughs> the resources people make sure the ice is good and thick. Right. It's neat that of all the conservation parks that are eligible for our card that we can visit. As far as I know, this is the only one that stays open year round. So it's uh, it's good value for our card, sixty dollars each. For, that was for a, a yeah for a year. Yeah, for for the whole year. Several several parks, uh, especially in the summertime. But this one is, uh, as Susie said, is year round. I'm looking at trees covered in, well, probably snow and a, ice. a combination of snow and ice. We had a bit of a storm yesterday, and we, like crazy people, <laughs> go out the next day to sit in the parking lot <laughs> well, and uh, have chili. Oh, the chili was good. It was the snow and the trees that sort of enticed me. But we should have just had our picnic straight in the car. <laughs> Which, now we're finishing up in the car, but yeah. Well, the next time we could just drive up, have something simple organized, and stay in the car. <laughs> if it's cold, really cold outside. Like, I'd like to come <clears throat> at the time when the uh, the fish huts are up. Which will be what? About about three months. for February, March? Uh, no, usually if it depends on the ice. They usually get them out in January. You get about three months fishing. So I'd like to walk out on the lake. But if, it, but if the winter is mild, you may not get any. Yeah. Well, if today's any indication. We're in for the cold now. I remember working out, not on ice, but working out in 30 below. And uh, I was cold, trimming trees. And you get back to the fire at lunchtime and you couldn't wait to get your Dagwood sandwich. And hot brewed coffee or some guys put soup in thermos. Do you want some more water in there? No, I'm good. This yeah. is Can I borrow your straw to stir yeah. this up? I'm gonna I'm gonna drive now, so just make sure your camera doesn't fall. Yep. Yeah. You could turn it the other way and show them us getting out of here. Yeah. Building something there. It's jutting out onto the lake. Oh, this will be a nice drive. Oh, yeah, the exit drive. Yeah, for sure. Fir trees, uh, 
I'm gonna go a bit slow. Cedar, cedars. Probably some pine trees. A lot of cedar, both sides. There's a gold, uh, a yellow birch. Too bad they didn't have camping in here. on down there, one of them. Somebody walking their dog. Oops. little town with all its old-fashionedness. It's actually 35,000 people. Is it 35 now? 35, yeah, 35,000. That's a quaint town. It's a slower pace than the bigger places. Around town, there are 70 works of public art on display. The town is known for its tree sculptures, and you can find them all around town, and they have a lot of various themes and interesting carvings. You can see the old fire hall on the left, the spire of one of the ancient churches in town. Coming up, there it is. And if you watch carefully, you'll see one of the wood carvings. I tried to slow down the speed. This carving is of a lady. Kind of neat. This is where we live. This is Gooseberry Street. A wee story. A senior friend of mine was looking to downsize and move into a tiny home south of where we live here in Orangeville. She and her husband were looking to move about two hours away. Now her grandson said, Grandma, why would you leave Orangeville? It has everything. True, it does. We have parks and trails, access to the Great Niagara Escarpment, conservation areas, a few places to set down a kayak, winter ice fishing, art displays. We have a lot of stuff here. It would be hard to leave it. 